And there we go. So, oh, now I'm really big. So my name's Shauna Sue from Crooked Door Studio. I'm gonna crouch down so you can see my whole face. Uh, thank you so much for joining me tonight for virtual painting shenanigans with Shauna Sue, formerly known as painting through the pandemic, but I am done with the pandemic. So we're not even gonna say the P word again tonight, okay? Um, so before we get started, I know you all are painting. Uh, the recording will be, so somebody just asked, we are recording this tonight. The recording will be available um, on the event, um, in the Facebook event, as soon as we're done, I'll put the recording up. And then the YouTube re recording will be available, ooh, probably Monday sometime. So welcome to a Painting with Shauna Sue. Let's take a minute and look around since you're all painting at home in home type environments let's take a moment and look around and make sure you don't have anything you're super concerned about getting paint on if you're painting uh using the paint that i'm using we're using acrylic paint tonight it's water-based water soluble if you're using acrylic paint when acrylic paint dries, it turns to plastic. So you're gonna have a real hard time getting it out of fabric. So let's make sure that if you have a, if you have a good shirt on, switch your shirt out. This is just too close. I'm gonna have to zoom out a little bit. There we go, that's better. Um, make sure you don't have a good shirt on. Uh, make, if you have an apron on, sometimes when we paint, we flick paint off the edge of our canvas. So make sure your surroundings are clear, okay? Um, we all have our canvas tonight. I know since you're painting at home, we all probably have different size canvases. If you got them from me and the one I'm painting on, it's a 16 by 20 stretched canvas wrapped in and uh, stretched, stapled on the back. I'm gonna keep mine horizontal, right? I'm gonna keep mine landscape. Decide now before we get started, are you gonna paint your edges? Right? Are you gonna wrap your paint all the way around? You don't have to, it's entirely up to you. It looks nice if you do, it looks like your painting is wrapped all the way around, but it's not, not necessary, not essential. I'm gonna hang it up there, there we go. Um, so I'm gonna keep mine horizontal, that's the way this painting is laid out. I'm gonna try to paint my edges, we'll see, we'll see how that works. Um, you should have, some brushes. Let's talk about our brushes. You should have for this painting some kind of a big background brush, right? This is my three quarter inch oval wash brush. I love a good wash brush. I have a medium brush. If I compare it to that, to that big oval brush, you can see it's a lot smaller. Your brush may be flat. Mine is rounded, but it's skinny that way but it's rounded, this is a filbert. And then a pointy brush. I don't even know what number this is anymore, but some kind of a pointy brush to do some detail work with. Down here on my paper towel, I also have paper towels, right? You need to be able to dry your brushes off. I have a cup of water so I can um, rinse my brushes out. Make sure the water that you have in your cup is cool or cold never warm or hot. If the water's warm or hot, it does something weird to the to the paint on your brush. It like curdles it, does something weird. So always, <coughs> excuse me, cool or cold water. And while I'm, um, while I'm painting, I'm gonna take all of my brushes that I plan on using tonight and I'm gonna put them in my water and leave them there, okay? And now I hear people say sometimes that's not good on your brushes. You're right, it's not good on your brushes to leave them there long-term, like for days. But while we're painting tonight, it's better to leave them in there. So any little bit of paint that might be in them in between use, right, until I have time to wash them properly in the sink, any little bit of paint that might be left in them will stay, um, stay fluid because I've got it in the water cup, okay? It won't get all dried out and crusty. Something else you may have, paint pen. I always keep a paint pen. I shouldn't say always, but I usually keep a paint pen to sign my paintings with because I am real bad at signing with a brush. It's just who I am. I've always been bad at signing with a brush. So I keep a paint pen in my supplies as well. Let's talk about paint. 
let's talk about our paint that we have tonight and our colors. So on my plate, I have a healthy amount of white. The white that I'm using is block out white. You may be using titanium white, you may be using eggshell, you may be using some other white. That's okay, doesn't really, doesn't really matter. I use block out white because all of my colors, except for black and white, all of my colors are very transparent. We'll, we'll talk more about this later, but white is going to give my colors some weight. It's gonna make them more solid, more opaque, so you can't see through them. And we'll talk about that here in a little bit. So I have block out white. I have a nice bright yellow, orange, red. And sometimes we talk about the red, that it matters which red you have. You might have bright red or you might have fire red. Tonight, it doesn't matter. Whatever red you have is fine, as long as you're not making purple. If we're making purple, then we'll talk about it. Phthalo blue, any blue will work. Phthalo green, brown, some kind of brown that makes you happy, and a little bit of black. Okay, so those are my colors. Let's talk about our inspiration painting. Um, our inspiration painting is our wagon tonight. So the way we're gonna do this, we're gonna paint that the whole background. We're gonna paint the entire canvas. We're gonna give it a second to dry. If you're a super heavy paint user, you might track down your blow dryer because we'll want that to be pretty dry before we put the red wagon on. The red wagon will be the next step. And if you have a lot of wet white paint and you try to put a red wagon on there, it's all gonna turn pink, okay? And that's up to you if you want a pink wagon, but I'm going for an old red wagon. So we'll get the wagon on there. Then we'll start our putting our pumpkins in and we'll start filling our wagon. I'll show you, <clears throat> I have a tickle tonight, I'm sorry. Um, I'll show you some different flowers that you can put in there, some things you can do to fill in around your pumpkins. And then we'll do wheels and we'll do some highlighting and things and some final details. So that's how this is gonna work. So let's get started. 7.13, I know, I don't think Marie's on here tonight, but I'm two, two minutes ahead of schedule. It's usually about 7.15 before I get started. But let's get started, shall we? So I'm gonna start with my biggest brush. Find your biggest brush you have. And I'm gonna tap, tap, tap it in the water cup. All right, tap, tap, tap. I wanna soften it up a little bit. I wanna make sure there's no random paint left over in it, okay? And then I'm gonna dry it off on my paper towel. And I can see it's nice and clean. Okay. Now I'm gonna take a healthy amount of white. Don't be stingy with your paint. I'm gonna take a lot, like literally, like scoop it, like a lot of paint, okay? I'm gonna take a lot of white and a little bit of brown, blurp right there on the edge. And I'm not gonna mix it. I'm gonna let that happen on my canvas because I want it to be kind of streaky. I want the color to be uneven. So a lot of white, a little brown. I'm gonna cover that whole canvas side to side, cover the entire thing. Okay, a lot of white, little bit of brown, and let's cover that whole canvas. Long side to side brush strokes. Okay. Now I I see sometimes when people are you guys you guys do you <clears throat> I'm just going to provide little tips and guidance as we go. So I see sometimes at the studio when we're doing something like this, um, people will have marks where they put their brush down and pick it up on their canvas. They'll have like little tick marks where they put it down and pick it up. <clears throat> if that's happening to you, use more paint. If it continues to happen, turn your brush skinny ways, right? You're less likely to have, have those marks. If you're using your brush up and down like this, you're gonna have those marks 
if you turn it skinny ways, you're less likely to get those, those marks on your canvas. So I'm just gonna keep going. I'm gonna paint that whole canvas, a lot of white, little brown. If you feel super fancy, you can get another color in there. I wouldn't be afraid of that. I might steer away from red <clears throat> because it will turn pink, right? But I think a little teal in there would be pretty. You could get a little bit of orange. But our goal right now is to paint that whole canvas side to side, all the way down. And you can see mine is already different shades of brown. And again, I can't emphasize this enough. Use plenty of paint. Don't be stingy with your paint. I like to get a lot of paint on that canvas and then move it around with my brush. If you're struggling trying to get the canvas covered, you're not using enough paint. Now remember, as you paint this, acrylic paint blends while it's wet. Once it's dry, it will not blend. That's why I've started at the top, but I'm working my way slowly down the canvas, getting it exactly how I want it before I move on. If you have decided that you're gonna paint your edges, now's the time, okay? It's easier to do it while you have that color on your brush than it is to try to match it up later. Oh, that's looking good. I keep laughing because I have the dogs outside. I have two dogs and I have them both outside and they're just running in circles because they've been in the house all day. So I have them out in the fenced backyard and they're just running in circles, just barking and carrying on. And I'm like, that's it, friends. Get it out outside. Keep all those shenanigans out there. Maybe if they run it all out now, maybe then they'll uh, they'll be able to actually go to bed later tonight when it's bedtime, right? And wishful thinking, right, Dawn? <laughs> crazy, crazy babies. 
I love them, but sugar is, uh, he's showing his uh, adolescence right about now. Oh, so it's sad when they get older, but it is quite lovely when they get older, right? That you don't have the puppy stuff to deal with anymore. Oh, puppy stuff. Again, I love him. I love that little dude, but he has started uh, making poor decisions. So he turned a year old September 1st. And for those of you that don't know, he's a, um, He's a he's a pit bull mix, but he's really not. His DNA says he's a pit bull mix. He's not. Um, if you have seen the movie or seen the commercial for the movie, Prey, P-R-E-Y, Prey on Hulu. It's a prequel to the Predator series. The dog in that movie, there's a there's a dog that's a star in that movie. That dog is a Carolina dog. And Jen, I see you on here and I know you know what I'm talking about, right? Because you have a Carolina dog. I am convinced that Sugar is a Carolina dog. Absolutely convinced. And I don't know where I was going with that other than to tell you that I have two babies and they're sweet as pie, but he just turned a year and he's testing me. I got home uh, just a little bit ago. I had a, you guys keep painting. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna chat. I, I just got home from Bell Fountain a little bit ago. There is a lovely gay bar in Bell Fountain, if you didn't know, called the Olive Tree. And I just came from there. I taught a party, a paint class with the DWI, the Tupperware queen, the Tupperware drag queen. Was so much fun. The point of my story is when I got home, again, I'd been gone all day. When I got home, there was uh, one of my sandals on the couch. There was a sandal um, in the kitchen. There was a tennis shoe on the kitchen counter. I don't know how that happened. Um, none of them were chewed up. I'm guessing my baby boy just got them and just threw them all over the house. What do you do with that, right, boys? Okay, I shouldn't even say boys. I should just say teenagers. Okay, so my canvas is covered. You keep going. You keep doing you. I'm going to add one little step, one, one little touch to this whole thing. I still have my messy brush. I want to kind of distress the canvas at the edges. So with my messy brush, I'm gonna take a little bit of brown paint, just a little bit this time, and along the right side and the left side. I love I love her as well. We we became fast friends today, Lynn DWI. We became fast friends today. Um, I think she's gonna teach a Tupperware thing at the or have a Tupperware party at the studio. Right? Which I think it'd be a hoot. Okay, so I have a little bit of brown on my brush. I'm gonna to go to the edge and pull in and let go. Now it's it's very subtle. I'm gonna get close. Oh, I'm stuck to the can, easel. Okay. So I have a little bit of brown on my brush and I'm gonna set it down and pull in and let go. Pull in and let go. Just kind of distressing the edge of my canvas, but I'm pulling into the middle and letting go. I don't wanna put my brush down and pull out because I'll have a mark where I set my brush down, okay? Oh, crooked, there we go. So I'm gonna do that on both edges. Just a little bit of brown, pull in. Some strokes will be longer, some will be shorter, and that's okay. When I get over to the other side, from the outside, pull in, pull in and let go. So Lynn, I feel like you will know this. Have you been to the olive tree? Oh, you need to go, we need to go. Okay, so I he booked me for another paint class. 
for those of you that are into Hocus Pocus, we're having a Sanderson Sisters brunch paint party Saturday, October 22nd at 10 a.m. It's going to be a hoot. And the owner of the olive tree is this lovely young young gay man. He's Tyler. He's fantastic. So I, I highly recommend if y'all want to go and support him. He's, he's pretty spectacular. So this little bit of brown that I'm pulling in, I'm just on the left side and the right side. I and mean, you could pull some across the top and the bottom if you want. I'm just going to pull on the left and the right. So to be respectful of everyone's time, we want to make sure this is dry before we move on. Um, so my clock says 727. How about 735? We'll move on. So again, if, if you're like, oh my God, I'm not going to be ready. There's a lot to this painting. And for us to get through it by nine o'clock within our two hour time frame, I'm going to keep moving. So you work at your own pace and remember this is being recorded. You can come back to it later, okay? So I'm gonna finish this brown on here and then I'm gonna head to the blow dryer. I'm gonna put my wagon across this bottom half. I wanna make sure that white is dry because I don't wanna put red on top of wet white paint. So 7.35, we'll come back together. We'll be ready to move on to the wagon. Okay. Okay, so again, seven seven thirty five. We're going to move on. I'm going to go ahead for just a minute. I'm going to shut my camera and my sound off. I'll be back, but that's because I'm going to disappear to the other room <clears throat> and turn the blow dryer on. And y'all don't need that squealing in your ear. Okay, so we've got five minutes, and we'll come back and we'll start to ponder that wagon. All right, I'll be back.
Okay, I'm back. We still have, you still have about three or so minutes. <clears throat> but I, uh, it's a good thing I turned the, turned the camera and the sound off because the minute I walked away, um, Honey, my other dog, started crying at the back door because she couldn't see me anymore. <clears throat> and then um, I came like running through the room because I thought there was something wrong. And it was a whole scene that y'all didn't need to see. Okay. So we still have about three minutes. Come on, baby girl. So let's see, I usually tell stories on, on drying breaks. Dawn, I feel, oh, Dawn's not there. I'll wait for Dawn to get back. So on, on the drying breaks, I usually tell, tell stories and I have, a, I have a brief chicken story that Dawn needs to hear. Oh, Dawn's back. Okay. So chicken story. This is just a short story. So you, you know, all about, all about chickens, right? And you know, chickens molt, right? And sometimes they have a really hard molt. Poor Phyllis. She's having a hard molt right now. I'm going to have to knit her little sweaters if, if she doesn't pop those feathers back in. So right now I need to see if I can get a good picture of her. She's in hiding right now because she's molting and it's not pretty. But so for those of you that don't know, Phyllis is one of my one of my 27 chickens. And for those that are older amongst us, if I say Phyllis Diller, you know who that is. And that's who my Phyllis looks like. She has this big blonde poof of feathers on top of her head. She's a buff lace Polish. So she has this great big blonde tuft of feathers up there. And because she's molting, she's losing her, losing her feathers and growing new feathers in. And when new chicken feathers come in, they kind of look like porcupine quills. They're not, um, they're not all splayed out yet. I do, Don. I tell her she's still beautiful. Every, every chance I get. Sweet thing. Um, but because she doesn't have those feathers in her, on her head now, I think she can see me coming. So now she's never seen me before because her eyes have been uh, obstructed. But I come in the room and she's like, who are you, lady? <laughs> but anyway, they're, when their feathers grow in, they grow in like, like porcupine quills. So now my poor sweet Phyllis looks like she has like this um, 1980s punk rock spike hairdo. Poor thing. Poor thing. I kind, I kind of want to squeeze her like a Play-Doh, like a Play-Doh doll to have her just like pop those feathers out because it's getting kind of chilly to not have feathers. Okay, it's 7.35. Let's move on to that wagon. I know, Lynn, I need to get a picture of Phyllis with her, with her spiky do. Okay, wagon, here we go, friends. So we're actually, we're gonna use a smaller brush. So make sure that big brush, while you're not using it, you've popped it in your water cup. That way it doesn't dry out because we might use it again here in a little bit and we don't want it to dry out and have brown paint left over in it. So I'm gonna use one of my smaller brushes. I think, not my pointy brush, I think I'm gonna use my medium brush and I'm gonna use brown. And I'm gonna use the brown to trace where I want my wagon to go. And the reason I'm using brown is I'm gonna end up adding a little bit of brown to the red. That's gonna help the wagon look a little earthier, a little more rustic and a little less pink if I add a little bit of brown to that red. So, It'll, if I pick up some wet brown paint, it'll be okay. And by putting it on there in brown around the edges of my wagon, it'll look kind of like a shadow. Okay. So give me just a moment. I'm going to send the Yahoos back outside because I'm sure you can probably see it. They're wrestling behind me. Ouch, go Yahoos. Come on. Go, honey. Out. Out, honey, out, come on, out 
you go. Okay, sorry about that. So medium, medium brush. It's kind of like having children, right? They do crazy things and you correct it and then you just move on. All right, medium brush, clean it out, dry it off. And I'm gonna get some brown paint, that same brown we've been using. Now find halfway vertically on your canvas. So if I find halfway, it's right about there. And then I'm gonna go down about an inch. Okay, so find halfway and go down about an inch. And that's where the top of my wagon is gonna be. Okay, that's gonna be the top of my wagon. So I have lots of room up here for pumpkins and flowers and all kinds of fun things. Then my wagon is gonna come over about a fat hand from the edge on this side and about a fat hand from the edge on that side. So I apologize, but I have to get in front of it to make sure I get it straight. So about a fat hand. Look at that, I still didn't get it straight. There we go. And I'm okay if that's a if that's a big fat line. I'm okay with that. So that's going to be the very top edge of my wagon. Then if you look at an old wagon, it actually has an old wooden, or I'm sorry, an old metal wagon. It actually has a top roll where the metal rolls over. So I'm going to continue on with my round. I'm going to come down about thumb width, about the width of my thumb. Not quite an inch, I suppose. Like that. So I've created that top, what will become that top roll. So right now it looks like I have, I don't know, a ruler or a big long hot dog on my on my canvas. And then the bottom part of my wagon is, is going to be hmm, maybe four fingers, four skinny fingers high. Again, this is still all in brown. And I'm going to come in just a little bit from this top roll. So I'm going to come down and curve it. And the same thing over here, come in a little bit, and down and curve it. That is such a crooked wagon. You know what, I'm, I'm okay with that because it is an old wagon. There we go. And go straight across the bottom. Okay. And now just like children, they've gotten quiet. So I have to go peek real quick. Okay, they're okay. But you never know, they get quiet. You know, they're up to no good. Okay, so I have my, my wagon outline on there. Not gonna clean that brush out. It has some brown in it. I'm okay with that. Because I'm gonna end up adding a little bit of brown to the red anyway, to make it a little earthy. So brown, right there in the edge of your red. Always, always pick up your paint from the edge, not the middle. Pick it up right there from the edge of the puddle. And let's fill that wagon in with red. We're gonna go right over top of those brown lines. Okay, go right over top of them.
And because you have that brown underneath, you can kind of see, you can still kind of see the brown because the red is transparent <clears throat> and it creates that little bit of shading. Okay, filled in with red. Now I'm probably going to come back in a little bit and once that's dry and put a little more red on it, maybe even do a little more shading, play with it a little bit. But for now, I'm going to be done with it because if I keep messing with it, trying to get more paint on it, <clears throat> if I feel it doesn't have enough, I'll start picking up half dried paint and it's gonna start looking funky and overworked. So I have that one coat of red on there. I'm gonna let it dry and I'm gonna move on to something else. I'm gonna move on up to those pumpkins, okay? So I'm gonna take this brush and clean it out real good because I'm gonna need it for pumpkins next. Okay, so now to clean that brush out, again, leave the wagon alone for now. We'll come back to it, <clears throat> but I'm gonna tap, tap, tap in the bottom of my water cup, use that medium brush, so I'm knocking the paint out of it, and I'm gonna use white paint for my pumpkins to start with. And you'll see why here in just a second, this will all make sense. So our painting has four pumpkins. It has one up high, and then it has one to the left, one to the right, and one right there in the middle. To get the spacing of our pumpkins, I've found that it's easier to put like a, it's kind of funny because it's Halloween-y, right? To put a skeleton of a pumpkin on there, <clears throat> to put the outline of it and space them where I want them and then go forward with adding color to them. If I, if I put the color on there, it's a lot harder to undo if I have an oops. This way, if you put a pumpkin someplace you don't want it and we're just using white and you're like, well, crap, that's off center or that's not where I wanted it. It's okay because you can, you've already used white in the background. You can take your white and a little bit of brown, send it back into the background and start over. So white is gonna be much more forgiving than just jumping in with pumpkin colors. Okay, so medium brush with white and I'm going to start with my with my pumpkin that's behind everybody and when I draw a pumpkin I'm going to pick this up and move close so you can see okay so I know I'm going to have that big blue one here I'm going to have a yellow one over here an orange one over here so up here is where I wanna put that pumpkin that's behind everybody. And when I paint a pumpkin, I like to start with the belly button. And when I say belly button, I mean where the stem comes out, right? So little smile, that's where your stem is gonna come out because then all of your lines pull from that area. 
So I'm going to go out this way for that side and out this way for that side and get a little more white paint. And this is going to be really important when we start filling them in with color. Back up here and pull down this way and that way. So that's my pumpkin that's behind everybody. And you can see I didn't finish the bottom. Bottom doesn't matter because it's going to be hidden. The bottoms of all of these pumpkins are going to be hidden. Okay. I'm going to head over here and put this pumpkin into the left. Starting with my belly button. Bell oh, and he might be a little crooked. He might be a little sideways. It's gonna be here and here, oh, inside the wagon. Kind of like that. I can even, if I want to, I can even draw a couple spines to the back. So you can see a little more of my pumpkin. So this painting has four pumpkins. You put as many on there as you want. I'm gonna try to stick as close to the original as possible. You know, as possible. We always take artistic license, right? And I'm gonna have, oh, he's gonna be a taller, skinnier pumpkin over here. Belly button. Down inside the wagon. Down inside the wagon. Lines. All those lines pull from the belly button. And then I'm gonna get that big fat guy right there in the middle. He needs a belly button. Okay. Looks like I've put white spiders all over my painting. But once I have those pumpkin skeletons, Right? I could put another one right here if I want to, but I'm not going to to fill that gap in. I'm gonna fill that gap in with flowers. But I could put another pumpkin there that's behind everybody else. But once I have my skeletons on there, now I can go back with color. So this guy, this very first one, let's go back to him. And I'm gonna leave the white on my brush and add some orange and fill him in. And I'm gonna fill him in the same way I just painted him. I'm gonna go back over those lines and all of my brush strokes come from the belly button. And you can see as I'm doing that one stroke at a time, I'm kind of creating lines in my pumpkin, little spines just with my brush strokes. Oops, I need to get all the way up on that white. So we're covering that white up completely. But pull everything you do from that, from that stem area, from that belly button area. Here's my orange one. I'm gonna go, go to this one next. He's the next one I put in, right? This guy over here to the left. I'm gonna grab some yellow, a little bit of white. Pull 
from the belly button. You guys are going to be tired of hearing me say that. But I can't emphasize it enough how important it is to get the to get it to look right, to get it to look like a pumpkin that you pull from the belly button. So if this one, if you can see the back side of it, you have to, you still have to pull. So those ones, those ones, let me make this a little more clear. The part that's behind the stem there, I have to just pull up, up and out. Everything I do pulls from the belly button. Ooh, I got a little orange streaks in there. I kind of like that. I like that a lot. I might add some, some more orange. Okay. And you can see I'm just getting the base color on there. I'll add a little shading and a little highlighting here in a bit, but I wanna get that base color on there right now. So I still haven't rinsed my brush out. So I've got orange, white on there, a little bit of yellow. I'm gonna go right into some orange and red. So orange and red on my brush for this guy over here at the right. Ooh, he's dark. So with my messy brush, orange and red. Oh, goodness. Come on, sir. <laughs> so my pumpkins I'm getting a little messy on the top of my wagon I'm okay with that I'll go back when I when I put more red on my wagon I'll go back and clean that top edge up oh my God. Ooh, I like it I like it a lot And then you get to decide what color this guy here in the middle is going to be. I think I'm going to go for kind of a turquoisey, turquoisey blue green color. So at this point, I'm going to clean that brush out because I don't want it to be a mud color pumpkin, right? And if I mix blue and orange, I'm going to get mud. So I'm gonna take a lot of white, a little bit of blue, a little bit of green. And I think that's gonna give me a real pretty turquoise-ish color for that pumpkin. So let's put this big guy in. So again, I'm using a lot of white, little green, little blue. Everything comes from the belly button. So good, loving that color. I was gonna go back in and start playing again and I'm like, no, no, you mess with it too much. Things get weird.
Yep, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop messing with it. I'm happy with where I'm at. I'm gonna give you another minute to get those colors on there, and then we'll do a little shading, a little highlighting. I'm gonna leave the wagon alone still. I'm not not ready to play in that wagon yet. See Dawn typing frantically. The anticipation's killing me. She's like, Shauna Sue, stop talking to me. I'm trying to type. Oh no, why can't she hear me? Did she click the join audio down at the bottom left? Oh. Oh. Oh, again, technology, right? When it's good, it's good. When it's not, it's not. Oh, awesome, awesome. Well, I'm glad you're here with us, friend. Friend Michelle, I'm glad you could join us tonight. Okay, so I'm gonna go back in now. I'm going to move on to my small brush, to my pointy brush. So my big and my medium are in the water cup. I'm going to go on to my pointy brush. And whatever the darkest color is that I used in each one of these pumpkins, I'm going to use that color with my pointy brush and essentially draw back over those white lines that we started with. So if I go to this orange one, orange was my darkest color there. Might have to add a little red to make it a little darker, but orange. And I'm gonna go ahead and draw, start here at my belly button and draw some, some lines back in. All right, then my yellow pumpkin, there's a little bit of orange in it. So that would be my darkest color for my spines. So drawing back over that original white. Go. And oh, that, that seems too aggressive. I'm gonna take a little bit of yellow, I think, and go right back over that and soften those. It's the beauty of acrylic paint, right? It dries super fast. It's really malleable. If you don't like something, just wait, you can change it. Okay. Over to my red pumpkin, my darkest color there was red. It was red and orange, but red is a little darker than orange. Okay, and I'm gonna rinse that brush out to put my blue my on my turquoise pumpkin. So a little blue, little green. I'm gonna see if this is too dark. We're gonna give it a whirl.
I think it's okay because the lines are super thin. Ooh, I like it. So the thing to remember is every place we have shading, which is kind of what we've done, right? We've put some shading in those um, in the in the crevices in your pumpkins. So if we have wherever there is dark, there is also light. So I'm going to clean that brush out. And I'm going to go back to a little bit of white with my pointy brush. And I'm going to put just little, um, I like to say little zhuzh, little, uh, little highlight marks on top of my pumpkins. Just little bits of white, just very subtle. But it's another one of those things that adds just a little bit of dimension. I'm not really putting them any place specific. I'm just kind of pulling down from the belly buttons. Y'all are never going to look at pumpkins the same, are you? Going to go out and look at your your pumpkin belly buttons now. I'm going to do this on all all those pumpkins. Highlights. And then I'm gonna mix a little brown and white with that pointy brush and put my stems on there. And I'm gonna call those pumpkins done. Now, again, you may feel like I'm moving fast, but pumpkins, it's one of those things you can play with forever. You can get really intricate with the, with the shading and the highlighting, and, but we're under a time limit. We're, we're under time constraints, I should say. So I'm gonna go ahead and move on and put my stems on. Back down into the belly button. And for each stem, I'm going to use a little bit of brown, a little bit of white. When I put my stem on there, I'm going to pull that stem right down in. And then I'm going to kind of pull it along the spines just a little bit. Create like a little starfish where the stem comes in. At those uh, at the spines at the belly button. Okay. All righty. Now you can see, if you look really close, you can see my pumpkins are uh, messy at the bottoms. You can see there, like this one, I'm gonna have to fix my, fix my wagon a little. You can see I have a gap here where I don't even have any paint. Those are spots that I will put flowers in, right? If this were a wagon with just pumpkins, I would work a little harder to get them, to get them together nice and tight and not have that white gap there, but I'm gonna put flowers on it. So I'm not too concerned, okay? So now I'm gonna go back to that medium brush. I'm gonna clean it out, dry it off. And I'm gonna get another coat of red on that wagon. And I'm gonna use this coat to clean up that edge where my pumpkins came down a little bit. Okay. A bit of red on there. Don't forget, you can add brown if you want to, if you want to muddy that wagon up a little bit. And this wagon, this is something you can leave it. You can leave it like this, or you can do a little, a little more shading, a little more play underneath if you want. So with red on my brush, this is optional. I've got red and I've taken a tiny, tiny bit of black, the littlest bit of black on there. And I'm gonna come down 
that uh, that top roll with that red and little bit of black and kind of accentuate that a little bit. And I'm doing it while this red is wet. So I'm not laying the black on top, I'm blending it in. So I'm gonna get some more red on my brush, a little more black. I'm gonna do the same thing down here at this corner. So I'm gonna lay this down here and then go back over it and soften it. And do the same thing over on that right hand side. And again, you could play with this forever, getting it, getting it just right. But I think the important takeaway here is to do it while, while that's wet, because I don't want to lay the black on top. I want to blend the black into that wet red. I'm gonna do a little more here and then we'll talk about some flowers, I think. No, sir. No, sir. I even take my little brush with a little bit of black and play a little bit. Okay, so I don't want to do the wheels yet because I want I want that red to dry before I go to put the wheels on there. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to talk about some flowers. So I feel like I keep saying this, but flowers, another one of those things that you can put as much on there, as much time into it as you want, or you don't have to do them at all, right? But my goal here is to show you just a couple different, <clears throat> a couple different ways to do some flowers. So I like to start when I put my flowers on, I like to start with my greenery first and then put my flowers over top. Okay. So I have my pointy brush. I'm going to take a little bit of green and put some. Um, some weeds, stems, yeah, weeds, I guess. So I'm just kind of picking spaces where I want um, like clumps of flowers. So I know I want some flowers to come out of this space. So I'm gonna put some greenery and I'm just use, just putting sprouts in there, I suppose. feel like I'm going to use some green, a little yellow and a little white, green, yellow, white. And I know I'm going to want a flower down here. So I'm going to go ahead and put a leaf. Oh, my wagon's so wet. So green, yellow, white, a couple leaves down here on the wagon where I know I can attach flowers to them later. Sounds like I have a monster in my living room. It's just my boy, just my silly sugar boy. Let's see, I wanna put a leaf right there. So I'm putting my greenery, I'm putting some um, green stems, some green shoots, some green leaves. I'm kind of focusing them. It feels kind of random, but if we really look at where I'm putting them, I'm putting them in the places where my pumpkins come together. 
because that makes sense to me. I could have a flower tucked in there in that gap. I could have flowers coming out from between these two pumpkins, from between these. So it may seem random, but it's it's really not. Okay. So I've got some I've got some leaves on there. I've got some greenery. Oh, something else I'm going to do. I'm going to clean that pointy brush out. And I'm going to use a little bit of brown. I feel like I want to put some, some twigs on there. Oh, good question, Don. I'll be back. Um, I'll, get, I'll get closer about the leaves here in a second. I'm going to use a little bit of brown with my pointy brush. And I'm going to put some twigs in there. And twigs are going to be different from my greenery because the twigs are gonna be kind of um, shaky for lack of a better word, where the grasses are very straight and smooth. So to do that, I'm going to, um, with the brown to make it look like a twig, I know it's hard to see because of my hands in the way, but, I'm twirling my brush. And it's making things look kind of wiggly. But that's what helps it look twig like. Okay, let me put a couple of those on, Dawn, and then I'll go back and we'll talk about um, leaves. Come on, buddy. Couple more twigs. And the twigs are something you can decide, do you even need to put flowers on the twigs or, or are you just out in the yard collecting twigs? You just picked them up when you picked your pumpkins. I just feel, I felt like, feel like Bob there, right? We just gave it a whole story. When you filled your wagon with your pumpkins, Okay, so leaves, the way I like to do leaves, you can do it with a small brush if you want, but my favorite way to do leaves, let me get a different brush here. My favorite way to do leaves, I love to do it in one brush stroke. So the brush that I have, it's a flat brush, skinny. Oh my goodness. Come on, buddy. You're wearing me down tonight, friend. You're wearing me down. Okay, so I have my flat brush, right? I guess if you're looking for a measurement, it's not as big as, not as wide as my pinky. And I'm gonna load this guy up with paint. I like to do uh, leaves in like a one brush stroke type thing. So I'm gonna grab a lot of green some yellow, maybe a tiny bit of white, I'm getting this lovely limey color, a little more green. So green, yellow, little bit of white. So I've got that on my brush. And then once I have that on my brush, I like to take a little swipe of white and don't blend it. So a little zoop, so that white is just hanging out on the end. And then I'm gonna use that brush. I've got a lot of paint on there. And I'm gonna use that brush skinny ways and press and let back up. Press, let up. So I have a light side, a dark side. Press and let up. You got three little leaves. That's my favorite way to do leaves. So again, load it up with, with your green yellow, take that little swipe of white. So it's just hanging out there on the end. And then let's see, where do I want, where do I want some leaves? I feel like, oh, well, maybe, maybe I want some leaves up, up in here. So maybe right there, right there. A little cluster leaves there. 
Oh my goodness. I think for the next virtual, I think my uh, my four legged friends are going to have to go go someplace else. I need a clump of leaves up here. Okay. Um, I'm going to use that same kind of technique and put some flowers on there. Ooh, 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 these would look like pussy, pussy willows. If I use that brush and I just use white, what if I come up here, I'm using this brush skinny ways. What if I do this on this brown? I start, oops, let me get to where you can see me here. Start at the end, pull in, come down a little to the left, down low to the right, down low to the left, to the right. It's kind of hard to see because it's white on a very white area, but they kind of look like little pussy willows then. Let me do that down here where it's a little more brown. What is that? like a little cluster of pussy willows. Let me do that over here so you can see it in the in the dark section. So that same brush, that flat brush, medium flat, loaded up with white paint. And I'm going to pull using a skinny waist, press and pull in from the end. Come down a little to the left down a little further to the right. And I'm pulling them into the stems. In. Oh, that's fun. I like those. I guess it's the wrong, wrong time of season for pussy willows though, huh? But that's okay. There are no rules in my world. Yeah, pussy willows anytime we want. It's fun too. You don't have to do those with white if you don't want. You can pick a color, mix a little, mix a little pink. That would be fun. You do those with like a little bit of orange. That would be fun. Um, let's see, what else do I want to do? Ooh, 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 using that same brush, that medium flat brush. What if we put little daisy flowers on there? So if I'm gonna put daisy flowers on there, I'm gonna use the other end of my brush with a little bit of yellow. Let's see, where do I wanna put a daisy? I'm gonna put one right here. I have to have some place to pull my petals to. I see when a lot of people paint daisies, they'll set their brush down close to the center and pull out. And that kind of makes it look like a fan. I'm gonna use my brush and pull my petals in. So I have my yellow center. All right, friends. Back out you go. Come on. Out you go. I'm going to use that brush, skinny ways, and pull into that yellow dot that I put. That's going to be the center of my flower. So push, pull in, and let up. Push, pull in, and let up. I'm going to create a plus. And then I can fill in those gaps. Like that. And then I can take a little, a little yellow 
and make that center a little bit bigger. We'll dab, dab, dab. Like that. Little daisy flower. I can do the same kind of thing with a like a sunflower type type flower. Same kind of thing. It's just going to be on a bigger scale. Okay, so I'm going to take a little bit of brown. And I don't have to make it a big middle, but I need a dot so I know where I'm pulling my brush strokes to. And do you remember when I said at the beginning, all of our paint is very transparent. We have to add a little bit of white. That's what I'm going to do with this. Even though it's my sunflower, I'm going to use some yellow, maybe a little bit of orange. But I have to add some white to it so it'll show up. And then I'm going to pull these brush strokes to that middle. Oh, I guess this isn't so much a sunflower, so it's going to look like a um, black eyed Susan. I like it. And then a little bit of brown, do, 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 right there in the middle. Tap. So need another one down here. Let's see. So keep working on those flowers. Fill that in with flowers. But make sure when you're putting your flowers on there that you're adding white to your color. So it'll show up. I guess the, the, the process is I put the center so I know where I'm pulling my petals to, put the petals on, and then make the center the way I want it. So it feels kind of redundant, but I have to have a center to start with so I know, so I know where I'm pulling, pulling my petals to. Let's see. Do one here that's more like a sunflower. <clears throat> to make it a little more like a sunflower, I want the center to be a lot bigger. So yellow and white. Sunflower. Okay, let's see. I think I'm gonna put some some orange orange flowers, maybe maybe pink. I think it is. Go red. Little swipe of white. Just kind of fill in here a little bit. And then I'm going to do one more thing up here in the in the wagon or in the uh, flower area. Oh, I like that. I like that a lot. Okay, the wagon's looking pretty full. Okay, so I'm going to um, clean out my little brush. I fibbed. I'm going to do two more things up in my wagon area. 
I'm going to do a little highlight on those pumpkin stems. This is totally optional, <clears throat> but the stems feel kind of flat for me. So just little white shushes, like we did the little white zhuzhes on top of our pumpkins. Needed little white zhuzhes on top of those stems just to make them stand out a little. Okay. And then the last thing I'm going to do up in that wagon area, I'm going to use the other end of my big brush with some white. And in some of these areas where things come together, I'm going to do a series of just white dots. Kind of, they, they're space fillers. They kind of look like, I don't know, if you're using your imagination, maybe baby's breath. But they're lovely, lovely little space fillers. So the other end of my brush, little white dots. Don't be afraid to put some down on the wagon. These kind of overhang a little. Okay. Oh, I like it. I like it a lot. Okay. So I'm going to give you all a few minutes to keep working on those flowers. <clears throat> and it's giving me a little bit of time to let that wagon dry. And we're about ready to put finishing touches on it. We're gonna put our wheels on. We need to put our, our wagon handle, decide if we're gonna write something across our wagon. We're gonna wait and do that um, once we have our wheels on. So we need to do wheels, wagon handle, words, and then a little bit of shade under the wagon. So I'm gonna give you a few minutes step over here and see there's something happening over here so a couple minutes i'll be right back and we'll be ready to finish Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead now and put my wheels on there and the wheels have a couple, a couple steps. Again, you can, you can continue to play with your flowers, <clears throat> but I'm gonna have you watch me for just a second on those wheels. I'm gonna use my, my big brush because I'm gonna put them on there in just black for the moment. They're just gonna be big black circles and they're half on the wagon and half off the wagon. And my challenge is gonna be getting them the same size, but this is where I remind myself it's an old wagon, right? It's okay. Maybe, maybe they're not gonna be the same size. Oh, that was crooked already. Okay, so just in black, we'll do both in black first.
Oh, and the struggle is real. Getting uh, two wagon wheels the same size. <clears throat> Oh, not even close to the same size. Okay. I feel like I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to be okay with this. I'm gonna have to be okay with crooked wagon wheels. I'm all right with that. Okay, so once we have the black circles on there, I'm gonna take my medium brush, clean it out, dry it off. And I'm gonna take some clean white and put the idea of um, like the circles, the little centers in, and it's gonna turn gray and that's okay. So the centers in my wheels. And then with that dirty, dirty white on my brush, I'm gonna do some shushes around my, around my tires. Just kind of gray them up a little bit. Okay. So just dirty white on my brush. Kind of playing in there, blending a little bit of gray in. Okay. Super cute. Super duper cute. Okay. Gotta get our handle on there. So to put our handle on, I'm gonna use my medium flat brush. I'm gonna use it skinny ways. And my handle comes out where the wagon meets the tire. It's gonna come out and then come on up this way. And I, it's just gonna be black. So where the wagon meets the tire, there, and then angle it up. Just going back over it to make it a little thicker. Then the handle am I gonna give it? I think I'm gonna give it a big T handle. There we go. And because we've uh, we've put white zhuzhes on everything else and highlighted everything else, I feel like I need to put a little little white highlight across that wagon handle. And by putting a little bit of white back over that, that's a really big black mark we just put across our canvas with that wagon handle. By putting that white on it, it's gonna soften it a little bit, make it a little less aggressive. Tone it down with that gray. Still struggling with my wheels. Okay. 
Oh, friends, we're almost done. Okay, I'm almost done showing you everything I have to show you. You guys can, since you're at home, you just keep painting, right? But I'm gonna do a couple more things. I wanna put, it looks like my wagon's floating. I wanna put a little bit of shading underneath it. I'm gonna use my big brush and use it skinny ways, not fat ways, skinny ways with a little bit of brown, just a little bit. And I'm gonna go side to side, right underneath my, my wagon wheels, creating that little bit of shade underneath the wagon. That'll help set him down a little bit. And then I hesitate to say the last thing I'm gonna do because the last thing I'm gonna do is sign my painting. But one of the last things I'm gonna do is decide if I want to write something across my wagon. There are a couple ways you can do this. If your wagon is dry, you can use your small brush. You can use just a wet brush to write it on there first to see if it's going to land where you want it. I'm a big fan of using uh, the other end of my brush and air writing it. And then muscle memory, I'll flip my brush around and actually paint it on there. But that helps me if I'm spacing something out. So if I wanted to write, maybe instead of fall, if I wanted to write welcome in cursive, I would write it, air write it with the other end of my brush first to make sure I can get it spaced. I'm also a big fan of when I'm spacing something, find that middle letter. So if I'm writing um, welcome, W-E-L-C-O-M-E, -E, seven, W-E-L-C, the C is the middle, making sure that C lands right there. Start there and write the rest of the word and then back up. There's so many different ways you can do this. I'm just gonna wing it though, All right? So if I don't like it, I'll paint it over and go again but I'm gonna use my pointy brush with some white. I'm gonna go. There we go, welcome. <laughs> and I, I really want to go back in and fix it, but I'm not going to, because if you start messing with it, you'll just over overdo it. I'm gonna give this a little hook though. Okay. And just like that, we did it. We did it friends, we did it. So as we wrap up tonight, make sure that you're signing your paintings. I know a lot of people don't like to sign their paintings. I think it's important for, for every painting to be signed. Even if you don't want to sign it on the front, you can sign it on the back. Um, you can sign it with the Sharpie or paint back. I'm going to go ahead and call this done and sign it on the front. Usually bottom right or bottom left corner. Sign it right down here. There we go, in the year and call it done. I would love to see your paintings. If you wanna send send a selfie of you with your painting to me, um, either email or uh, crooked or, Shauna so at net or Facebook private message me. I would love to see them. Um, for tonight, that's it, we're done. I'm gonna go ahead and sign off and leave you guys to paint. I'm looking over and I'm seeing you all just working away. Right. So send me, send me, send me your pictures. I'd love to see it. And then stay tuned. Keep an eye on the Crookedor Studio calendar over the next couple of days. I'll get the October calendar up. We've got some fun things planned, but um, I'm not sure what date our virtual is going to be yet. Stay tuned.
Okay. All right. I'll see you guys all soon. Take oh. care, everybody. Be safe. <laughs>